Today we're going to have a look at this 1980 YZ250. As you can tell, it's seen better days. First of all, this is not my personal bike. This belongs to my best friend. And I know he wants to build some of this himself. He wants to learn how to do this. So there's a good chance I may not get a lot of the build footage or any of it on the channel. It all depends on our schedules. If he can make it over here, if I can make it over there, it just depends. But hopefully we'll show you the entire disassembly video. At least that'll give you an idea how it goes back together. Again, I'm not saying I won't have any build footage, but there's a good chance I may not. And this may take several months. This is a 1980. Parts are very hard to come by. And if you do find them, they're outrageous. Now there's a 100% chance we're gonna put more into this bike than it's worth. That's just how it goes. Same thing with the YZ250F. That was by no means a budget build. Luckily on that build, I probably broke even by selling some of the old parts and getting good money for it when I sold it. My buddy does not plan on selling this bike. In fact, this will be his first motorcycle ever. He may even learn how to ride on this beast. Now you can find the plastics, they're very expensive, but you can find them. Or we can try to recondition these. I'm not sure what we're gonna do yet. There is one part that we cannot find, and when we do find it, it's outrageously priced. That is the air box. We got excited one day, cause Rocky Mountain or Motorsport, one of the sites listed they had it. He ordered all the parts, only to find out they don't make them anymore. Hopefully they pulled them off their site by now. If you know anybody, or know where we can find, a airbox for a 1980 YZ250, please let me know in the comments section below or shoot me an email. That's the whole section here that goes behind the number plate. Now more than likely that's not going to be the only difficult part to find, but a lot of these other parts we can morph together or get from another bike of a similar year, that kind of thing. May not fit directly, but we can make them fit. This airbox is kind of a different story. Now even though I don't have a complete part list yet, I want to strip this down as soon as I can. He'd like to get this frame off for powder coat. Now we're going to start some disassembly. We're going to start with the obvious things. The side number plate here. There are all kinds of screw holes, but no screws. Just good old wire ties holding it on. Now the seat would normally have some screws right here, but yet again, there's absolutely nothing holding that on. Notice the rear fender is sagging. There would normally be two screws right here, two in the back, but yet again, we just have wire ties. Next big piece of plastic would be the gas tank. There's normally a strap that hooks from here to here, but yet again, it's just sitting in place. And here it is after about a minute of teardown. As far as plastics, we have the front fender and the number plate, and that will be all the plastic removed. We'll move to those next. Now 99% of the motorcycles are going to be exactly the same as far as the front fender goes. There are four screws holding on the front fender that mount into the lower triple tree. Typically they're 10 millimeter unless somebody's changed them, or if you have a KTM, Husky, Gas Gas, those kind of bikes. But most Japanese bikes 10 millimeter socket is all you need, and, and the same thing holds true for this one. And we'll use an impact to speed things up. Got a straggler. Now I'm not sure if this is an original fender, but the inside is actually fairly clean. I do believe it is original, just because these are kind of embedded in there. But for 40 years old, 
not too bad. Now I may not be the one to reassemble this bike, so I'm going to put all of the screws back where they came from. Usually I just put them all in a big bag, and I typically remember where they go, or I can reference back to a video. Now the smart thing to do would be to bag and label these, but I'm not exactly known for being the genius at all times, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put them back where they came from. The front number plate is pretty much held on by this plastic tab, just like every modern day bike. We'll undo that, and then there should be a 10 millimeter screw right here. Take that out. Bada bing, bada bang. You could see this was just uh, hanging out. Hmm. Have to test that somehow. But it was just hanging out right there. Uh, just chilling. Now take a look at this rear shock. It's probably not something you've seen before if you're my age or younger. It connects all the way up here underneath the gas tank down to the rear swing arm. That's not all. The reservoir is right here. Now it feels soft. This may be another issue is rebuilding the shock. We'll have to figure out what we need to do. I don't know if the hose has a leak in it. I don't know how to recharge it. I don't know a whole lot about it. But for now, we're just going to remove it. Now, before I remove the rear shock, we're going to remove this sweet ass silencer. Now, I've been messing with the rear shock, and unfortunately, it does not have the proper hardware. The original hardware had a bolt that actually had a cotter pin on this end of it, and they cobbled something together that I cannot get off. It's all rounded over. I've tried to get it off, and I cannot. All right, currently the rear shock has me a little bit frustrated, so we're going to move on to some easier things. We will remove all the wiring that remains. We can actually remove the carburetor. We will unscrew it from the boot. Also take off this janky filter. Pop out the carb that's spewing gasoline. We'll take off the top cap here. We've already unscrewed it to get to the piston. We'll leave this hang there. Here is our carburetor. Taking out that cable completely, we're going to cut more straps. And here's the rest of it. You don't want to ding this up. I'm going to keep it nice and smooth. It actually looks really good. Then we'll unscrew the throttle housing just as a whole. Should all pop off. We can take off our front brake lever. Of course, this has got two different screws in it. One Phillips and one slotted. Now you don't have to take these completely off. You can actually remove the grip and just slide it off, but we are just going to remove the whole thing. Now we can remove the front brake caliper. There are two 12 millimeter bolts. Do not have enough oomph in that machine, so let's do it by hand. These bad boys are on here. Somebody didn't believe in torque settings. There we go. Then we'll screw the bolts back into the caliper. Now we can check the pads, the pistons, and we'll do that in a later video. Also have this clamp holding the cable on. Just need to loosen that enough to pop it out. We can put the clamp back in place. Get a little bit ahead of myself. I actually disconnected the clutch lever first. This is the brake lever, which has the reservoir. Just two Phillips head. 
and we can simply loosen these up since we already have everything. Since we have the entire brick assembly done, we can just loosen it up. And now we've got the front brake off. Now I've already removed the clutch lever. The only thing holding it in place would be this cable here, which you can actually push in the lever and pull the cable out. Maybe a little stiff, but you should be able to get it out. And we've got yet another wire tie here for some unknown reason. Moving on, we'll take off both foot pegs. These are on here pretty tight. And repeat the process on the other side. Now on the right hand side, once you remove the peg, you'll notice it's kind of part of the actual brake lever. We're going to remove the whole assembly. We're just going to cut this cotter pin off. We'll then push the pin all the way through. Now you can separate these two assemblies once you get this taken out, or even before if you feel inclined to do so. There's a clip on the back hand side here. I didn't think I was going to do this today, but I am going to. Since I'm not taking off the rear shock, I'm going to remove the engine. And it's held on by four mounting points. You've got a bracket here, the bottom it attaches to the frame, the back it attaches to the frame and swing arm, and the top there's a bracket that attaches to the head and the top. These are 12 millimeter bolts right here, 10 at the top, and I'm not sure what size the rear is. We're going to go ahead and undo all of those bolts and nuts, we'll remove them all, and then we'll show you how the engine comes out. Now the moment of truth, will this bad boy come out? I have not removed the chain, which would obviously allow me to remove this a little bit easier, but we're going to give it a wing anyway. Essentially right now I am pulling the motor back to release the tension on the chain in order to remove the chain. And there is the motor. And at the end of the day, this is what we're left with. Only worked on it for about an hour, but essentially I need to remove that rear shock, the rear swing arm, wheel, the front wheel, handlebars, and forks. I've just got to figure out that rear shock. I could take it off from the top and pull the whole thing out, but it still would be attached to the swing arm, which I do not want. Yay for scooters. And here is the engine. I will eventually tear into this to take a look at the piston and the rings, bore, all that good stuff, just to see if anything needs replaced. It's probably not the ideal spot for it on a expensive table saw, but uh, that's what I've got for right now. Here are all the plastics. So obviously this will not be the only part to this series. We're at least going to have three more parts, I would imagine. There'll be another part two, removing that shock and probably the subframe, wheels and front suspension, and then another video of breaking into the motor, probably two videos on that. Of course, there's the XR. So that is going to do it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those below. If you see any of the tools that I use in this video that you'd like to purchase for yourself, that includes any of the woodworking tools. Be sure to check out the links. They are located below the video in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.